All right, thanks for staying with us. The new administration elected to power in 2023 took a hold of the economy with the monetary and fiscal policy implemented, such as floating the exchange rate, removing subsidies on petroleum products, and lifting of some foreign exchange restrictions. Now, these policies led to um, intended and unintended consequences. Now, rising inflation erodes the value of Naira, while the manufacturing sector and other stakeholders in the forex market uh, thread carefully be between the unstable exchange rate. So today, we're going through some of the highlights of the Nigerian economic and political ecosystem for 2023, and we are also going to be discussing our expectations for 2024. So it's just Uti and I, so we'd love to hear your thoughts. So please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to it, one eight zero three four six six three. All right, so Uti... Month of January. What was the major thing that happened in January? Ah, uh, uh, we started <laughs> selling money. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah. Twenty-three. I don't understand. The Naira redesign. Come the on. cash crunch. The rise of the of the cash black market. I saw bankers scaling fence. Ah. They were jumping fence for their lives. All of People a in the bank stripping naked. Yes. People, I mean, I saw an old man crying and wailing. You know, I saw a mother that could not pay her child's school fees. Mm. Then POS people went bizarre. Absolutely. You know, we were buying and selling money. We were, I mean, everything, I mean, at that point in time, I think it was just pure chaos. And the fact that the authorities then were coming after the banks, saying they were holding notes, they were doing all these raids. All of a sudden, it, it was, they were given the impression that banks couldn't distribute cash, which is their business, which is what we are, they, you know, they're there to do. I mean, the whole thing was just a, a mess in execution, mm. right? Um, failing to understand. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even think it was understand. Failing to acknowledge mm. how much we're still dependent on cash, even though we've had cashless policies in place for... I think somewhere around well, 10 wow. years now. Yeah. Um, so it, it really was a huge hit um, for us and a dismal way to begin the year. I mean, banks were inundated. Banks were shutting down because they just didn't have cash to pay people. You know, people were coming to bank branches and having to put out chairs, canopies, give water, like all sorts at that point in time. Really, the first quarter um, of the year was really marred by all the cash challenges mm. and then we went straight from cash to elections to election. <laughs> in february it was this year was the one ah, no year. no 2023 yeah. was you know like literally right that's why i said that it was in, it was just a lot of emotions i remember going through my phone you know people have been doing this posting of their 2023 like um, mm. dump i just say where do i start from Nah, from the excitement of the elections, I remember when I took my picture, I was in the UK, I said, no, 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 I must come back to Nigeria, I must vote. Hey, chef, I also free that for UK. <laughs> they, they, they sip my coffee and be watching the elections. Like, literally, right, the elections came in February, it, it came with a lot of, and you know, for, for the first time, right, a lot of young people were really, really out there. You could see the consciousness of young people wanting to participate in the electoral process in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the drama came with all the threats, with the all the... You know, the battified the versus the obedience. Versus the, what were the article ones called? Articula they, were not, articula they were not relevant. They were not relevant. Oh, my goodness. No, they were not relevant. So, actually. It, was, I mean, it was a battle between... Even though the result kind of like is trying to prove otherwise, but I feel... Because based on... I went to like several polling units... And the battle, PDP was not on that, on that ballot. As far as I am concerned, based on the voting, yeah. it was APC and, and, APC. and, and, and Labour Party. It was, yeah. P, it was Peter Obi and Tinubu. There was no, there was no article. So I don't mm. know where that result came out from. But, hey, <laughs> but that was it, um, you know. I mean, the elections for me, beyond you know, the things that you've said, I think it brought to the fore a lot of our unconscious biases. Absolutely. All the issues about tribe all the issues about this is our own, is vote for your son, vote for your person. Like all those, all of a sudden we forgot that we were like a multi-ethnic country. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, all the unconscious biases rose, 
both conscious and unconscious. Heightened. They all rose to the top. And, you know, we got a glimpse of how, if we're not careful, mm -hmm. there's a snowball effect that can just eclipse all of us. Absolutely. You know, um, so that, that election process was incredibly, incredibly divisive. And, you know, we went through that whole process of, you know, the results, whether people were contesting, whether they were going to court. There was the, um, what was that, the, the, the judiciary, was it a panel? Yeah, the judicial the panel. Days, days to read the, <laughs> their outcome and their findings. Mm -hmm. You know, then there was that whole tension afterwards of, will the inauguration happen May 29th? And there was all this tension, then it, all of a sudden it seemed like people didn't care, but then some people were not letting go. There was all the issues were the court that, cases. that it, court cases, then it seemed like the Labour Party was imploding on itself. Um, and then we sort of got through all of that. Eventually, we got to the inauguration, and there was a speech. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a speech. And there was a speech. And they were just saying, they just dropped the bob share. But <laughs> some, of us, the, some of us went to bed and woke up, and the world had changed. <laughs> like, literally, there was see, no fuel. The other day, I was feeling my tank. You know, I, 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 I stepped back. That's why I said that. See, if you do not know that God exists, 2023 should show you. You. you know how, <laughs> when, but you know how you are buying fuel, 16,000 naira, yep. 18,000 naira, and you are feeling it. Yep. We moved from 16,000 naira to 50,000 naira filling your tank. And God time. still so Literally, uh. I keep on asking God, please, where did you keep the money? Because maybe... I don't, I literally, I don't know how I, I don't fill my car. Understand? Like, I mean, I, I, when I was buying my car, I had it somewhere in the back of my mind a little bit that I needed to get a car with a smaller engine because I felt like this fuel subsidy thing was always on the horizon. But even at that, I remember the first time I filled my tank after that fuel, um, after the subsidy was removed, and it was about 36,000 something. And I remember paying, and then I was like, what in the world just happened? So since then, me, I just got into the routine. I don't wait for my tank to go to empty. <laughs> it just it's a it. psychological thing where I still want to pay a tinky. Hmm. But every half tank, just go out of it. By, you know, but I mean, we, and, and this is where we speak to the resilience of Nigerians. We went from, was it 168 naira? Yes. Petrol then. Yes, 100 and, to, yeah. to six something. No, five something we to started five something, off from. We start, started no. Off of, no, we started on four, four something. something. Yeah. We then moved to five something, and then to now five we're at something. six something. And, and you know, it seemed at the time like the world, I mean, the world ended, that's what it felt like. But we were here, you know. So the resilience, Nigerians are pushing through, we're suffering. And I remember we had a show then where there was talk about, I think the topic of the show then was um, sacrifice, something mm. around Nigerians making sacrifices. Mm. And the things that we talked about there, funny enough, still came up in today's speech. Hmm. We are still, as citizenry, being asked to sacrifice. Well, guess what? You're still passing, what was it, 7.3 trillion? What was that that they passed over the weekend? Hmm. Additional loans that we are just essentially mortgaging the future of our generations. So a lot of the things that we said in 2023 still ring true today. In that, I mean, if I come to the, 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 the president's speech this morning, so much, I mean, I, I, I try to understand it, or the spin that I'm putting on it is that it's a New Year's Day speech, so mm -hmm. it's not overly, you know, it should be positive, it should Absolutely. be. But then there was so much detail that was lacking hmm. for an administration that has been in power for seven months, and all that the president could state today that he did was I remove fuel subsidy. Fuel subsidy is not gone, by the way. I was going to tell you that so, right you, now. Do you know when the landing is, cost is stylishly snuck back? No, yeah. Right? The landing cost of, of, of petrol today is over 1,000 naira. Right? So how are we paying and 600, 600 and something. something? So, hello, whether you like it or not, Somebody's still paying and subsidizing somewhere. Mm. And then the second thing was the Naira devaluation. Now, well, not the devaluation, but this, the, the, the closing of the windows. Uh, so these things that have happened, they happened almost immediately 
in May, early June. What else? Then you come and, you know, you're reeling off all the same things like you are campaigning. Mm. You're talking about renewed hope. You're talking about improving productivity. You're talking about how you're going to put policies in place. You're talking about how you're going to address minimum wage. What exactly have you been doing since May? Hmm. So, you know, if you think about it from the perspective of, I remember when um, Governor Fashala was in office, he used to have these 100-day um, in office town yes, halls. Yes, town halls, yeah. So if we were to take 100 days in office, you should have had two town halls by now. What would you have said? that your administration has achieved. Mm. And when you talk about renewed hope, nothing that we have seen so far, people are hungry, people are suffering, there is poverty in the land. So what exactly are you doing to renew our hope? It's not just by saying my renewed hope uh, agenda. What is it? <coughs> How are you renewing the hope of the masses? Mm. You started off, I mean, I remember then uh, all the, back in the days of Bala Blue and uh, we are going to plant uh, <laughs> maize. And then, you know, you had, you had <coughs> talked about I'm how you were, <coughs> thank you, you had talked about how you were going to plant however 100,000 or 150,000 hectares. Then, seven months later, you are now telling us how you're going to plant 500,000 500, hectares. hectares, yeah. The 150, have you planted it? Mm. Where, where when are, are we, we going to have it? Where are we, where are we on because, that 150 yes. that was there? I mean, I'm not a farmer, but I don't know how long it takes corn to grow. You probably no, know better um, than I me. I mean, it doesn't take long. Exactly. So have we planted that 150,000 acres? You were talking about food scarcity and shortages. How, what have you done? Tangibles. You know, and this is where, for me, I think that his PR team and his media team need to do better. Because when you are talking about, and we all know the positive impact agriculture can have on this country. The amount of arable land that we have in this country for, for agriculture is amazing. But then we have a security problem. So when you then talk about security, security, you just sort of glance over it. Mm -hmm. But then less than how many days ago, how many attacks have we had in how many different communities? Absolutely. In Five people still got killed, was it yesterday or a few days ago? Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, let's talk about the fact that that wasn't even mentioned in the speech. It was not. It wasn't, it wasn't talked about, right? You know. So there were there were no tangibles for me in that speech, right? Um, and when we take into account everything that has happened in 2023, I needed more assurances, acknowledging that he understood that people were going through a lot is great. You know that for me was probably one of the best parts, parts of the speech in that, oh, guys, I am, I know. I'm aware. I'm aware mm -hmm. of what you feel. Now, the way to renew hope when you then tell me you are aware is to give me tangibles, is to give me timelines, is to tell me what to expect and when, mm. and then to continue the narrative. So your PR team literally needs to be on the ball. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you told me you were going to plant 150,000 hectares, what kind of volume of maize was I looking at? What kind of value chain fact, do we where, have? Where are we? Yes. What you kind of value chain? Months ago, exactly. for goodness, do you know how many cycles of maize yeah. that would have been? So, so where is are there, we? What is, what is, that's what Where's I'm saying. the produce? So how many tons of produce have we realized? How have we processed it? How have we used this? How has this come in? To move the economy positively. It's the same thing we, with, with even the stuff they do. What's the, the, that minister for humanitarian, this thing? I keep no, on saying, that's humanitarian, humanitarian what ministry. Is the, what what that. is the parameter? Because if you really want to say that you are targeting Nigerians, the vulnerable, yes. everybody's vulnerable. Everybody's vulnerable right now. Everybody's vulnerable, yes. vulnerable at different levels. Exactly. And then when you are talking about, I mean, we closed the year, inflation was 28 point something percent. I mean, at this point, as you breathe air, you are, you are getting poorer. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you have a permanent rat it's, where you keep your money. It's and it's just chewing through the thing faster than you can get it. It's that bad. Let's not talk about the free fall of the exchange rate, even though I think I was reading something about it rallying by almost 130 something naira recently, but I didn't get the chance to read the entire story. But even the usual influx of IJGBs that we get in this festive season didn't have a positive, um, a noticeable 
impact, impact on FX Bank. Can I even tell you what happened? So when I went to do my lashes on the 30... On the 30 yeah, yeah, I still no, do lashes. No, I did lashes, too. <laughs> I love May it. May not be like, say, a loss. So there was one of the I just just gave back a bit whatever. To, I, I not really, you. not even one. I think there were like three of them. There's lots of them. But one of them in particular didn't have now. She had a hundred dollars. Do you know that she gave the last lady the hundred dollars with the hope that she was going to give her cash um, back? To who have, right? She didn't have the cash. Have. And I mean, guess what? The cash, the that exchanging that dollar would have even given her more money because yeah. she had already exchanged the, 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 yeah. the dollar at a very crazy rate. Yeah. Me, I just kept quiet like I was not hearing what they were saying. Yeah. But she couldn't even finalize the transaction. Yeah. No, I mean, we're, we're in another cash Come crunch on. right now. So, I mean, throughout the last quarter of last year, I mean, of course, we know that one of the things that the president um, scrapped when he came into government first was extending the validity of the old notes that gave us some respite um i think that was end of march yeah um was it end of march early april i think it was early april now i think that's when that whole when he's when he announced that the old notes yeah will so go he said line, the validity of the old notes was was gonna extend it to december 31st mm. and then of course they came i think was it two months ago and said announced they were, they were extending ex it. they were it was Inde indefinitely, indefinitely yeah but the fact is there's still cash. There's no cash available now. So if you've tried, you may not have noticed. If you if you don't if you withdraw cash from ATMs, you will notice that if you take your, your card to another a bank's ATM now, you probably can only withdraw five thousand. For some banks, they've even configured it. If it's not your card or card of certain banks, they push it out. Sorry, you cannot withdraw. Hmm. So all of these things, banks are having to find ways to manage that deficit. Where cash is not available, mm. so but where is the cash, Uti? So I, I would imagine I don't I don't have the facts to that, but I would imagine that at the time when cash was being collected in the volume that it was being collected by the CVN, I would imagine that a lot of destruction had happened. That's the, that's the only logical thing that I can think of. And of course, production is now not able to meet demand as much as possible. I mean, if you during the cash crunch, because those notes are being produced here. Right. During the cash crunch, the new Naira notes, they were all sorts. You, I mean, if you took tissue and wiped it, ink will come up. <laughs> so, so really, really, we've been through it. We've been through it. Oh. Um, <coughs> and I mean, that, that sort of also gave rise to a lot of the fintechs, you know, growth that we saw in that area. Um, a lot of people opening accounts because, I mean... Now you can buy plantain in traffic and transfer. You can, you can buy almost anything in traffic and transfer. Absolutely. Like Everybody it brought, has. It brought it. It brought it. Yeah. Its pros. Yeah. You know, even though a lot of a lot of pain. Yes, a lot of but, pain. I mean, that was one positive that came mm. out of it. So very rarely. I mean, you and I went to the market and we were just sort of you know, transferring money everywhere. All over the place. Even though my bank and, was not working that day. <laughs> and then POS people, you we know, they're the everywhere. Rest. You know, POS people everywhere, right? Being able to you, withdraw money and. Really, I mean, for a fee, it's not mm. free. But, so we're, we're, still, we're still struggling. You know what? But Let's just take a very short <laughs> break. Because, you know, after all of this drama, there, was the, there were arrests. Yes, yes, of arrests yes, that yes. yes. But uh, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing highlights of 2023, and hopefully we'll be able to get to our expectations for 2024. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp, 081-8038-4663. Um, please send us a message. All right, so, Uti, I mean, there, after all the, the settling in, mm. um, the judgments from the Judicial Council, from the Supreme mm -hmm. Courts as well, and all of those dramas that happened, then there were now multiple arrests, right? Um, the EFCC boss, you know, was arrested. Mm -hmm. Emefele. The CBN even, governor. Even though a lot of people are like, can they hold him by the jugular? Because it's like, you know. That one was just pure beef. <laughs> like, the arrest of man, like everybody. Before we even care that, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's which or not, Mena first beat up. Mena first beat up first. <laughs> You know, Emefele was arrested, and I think he's still in, in custody. Or has he been granted bail? You know, I've, I was, I've lost track of that. Yeah, story. I was I following up up until like uh, two weeks I know ago. He was back in court at some point. Yeah, two weeks ago I think they were. I think they were. There were conversations mm. around bail. I'm to not be sure. Honest, I stopped at the point where he turned up at the at the court with, with a big Bible. Bible that was almost <laughs> the same size as him. 
at that point, I was like, you know what? I give up. I don't want to know anymore. Oh when you would decide what you are doing, tell us. Oh I cannot God. be following because this Because as of two weeks ago, I was reading where they had talked about him, you know, um, buying off banks with proxies, yes. right? The you, investigative using, yes, report. Yes, the investigative report that came out saying that he bought out, I mean, he had a lot of fronts that, you know, mm. that acquired mm. um, a lot mm. of things illegally, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so... At that point, I said, see, you'll be all right. Because yeah. I was not there when you were eating the money. I will not be there, I, 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 you, you know? know? But you see, so I, I want us to find a balance, right? Mm. So with the things that happened with our judicial system, the prior, I mean, post-elections and all of that, of course, the arrest of Emir Feli mm. and all of that, do we have faith no. in the judicial system? No. Do you understand? Do we, because again, this is, I get the fact that Emir Feli, Whatever it is that is happening to him, a lot of Nigerians actually, at that point, people don't even want to care. Mm. But I don't also want us to lose the fact that we must always find balance. And no matter we what, do what's right. everyone is innocent until proven without reasonable mm. doubt that the person mm. is guilty. So even though we are happy <laughs> that certain, th certain arrests were being made, at the same time, mm. was the process transparent? Mm. Was it clean? And do we, need, do we have faith in our judiciary to, to, because again, let's not forget allegations that were thrown around our judiciary that were saying that certain monies were paid, especially to the, um, the judicial panel, that committee, right? So monies were paid to them, and again, allegations of never getting a fair, um, fair, uh, fair what's it called, judgment when it came to the, the aftermath of the elections, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, there's just a lot that, that you know, and I don't know. There has always been, mm. and in the face of nothing significant changing, there will always be mistrust, distrust with, the, with, with any institution of the government. Mm. Um, the judiciary is the same thing. So today, even if I follow due process, do, do the people believe I follow due process? Even if I attempt to be transparent, do people believe that I'm actually being transparent? Mm. There are a lot of challenges that are being faced. Do we have faith in the judiciary? Absolutely not. Do we trust anything? Once it carries the taint of government, we naturally have our backs up. So there's a whole reorientation, and there's going to be, have to be a massive push on the side of the government to convince the populace that, you know what, I've got your back. You can trust what I say. You can believe Absolutely. that I'll do what I'll say. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do what I, I have to do. Mm. And I, I use that to, to piggyback to the... To the um, President's speech mm -hmm. also talked about um, working to bring in foreign investment and how, you know, capital. Germany. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we are seeing capital flights. Is it not here that <laughs> how many pharmaceutical companies closed down mm -hmm. and carried their money and, and ran? left? Yeah. Is it not shop right that, mm -hmm. you know, so where the, the yeah. co companies the game pull out. shut down in 2023? Yes, game, the, the game shut Absolutely, we're seeing companies pull out. And, you know, for me, again, this is missed opportunities. And that's why I keep talking about his PR team and being able to tell the right stories for him. Now, if you take the, and the media, we also have a responsibility, right, to share the right stories and, and, and let the populace know the things that are happening, right? There was a lot of shout about companies leaving Nigeria. But then there were lots of companies that also came into Nigeria, right? Even in Lagos, there's the, the car brand that's trying to build its assembly mm -hmm, plant. Mm -hmm. There is, um, uh, what's the company that makes diapers that also built a, a large, or are building a large factory? Mm -hmm. There is, um, there's the other company that also does hair products. Um, what was that one called now? The, the uh, extensions, the, the hair extensions. extensions hair yeah. extensions um, mm -hmm. that make the darling curls yes. and all of that. Also, again, commissioning a big factory. These are all companies that have invested heavily in Nigeria. So then when you want to tell a story, this is the balance that you're talking about. Mm. You can't just say, I will get in capital. I will back it up with, oh, like X, Y, Z mm -hmm. that has happened. Mm -hmm. And then I will acknowledge that some have gone. Absolutely. Then I can now see that truly you're not just trying to wash me mm. with what you're saying. I can then start to see that, oh, there is an understanding of the scope of the problem. There's an understanding of solutions. Because one of the things that I find right now that when we talk to people, everybody's like, the, the diehard fans are like, he's working, he's working, give it time, give it time, give it time. But in general, without information, without clarity, 
I don't, I, do I know that it's working? I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand it. I don't know what your long-term goals I, are. I, I mean, and speaking to clarity and mm. information, right, I feel like this is where the media then comes in, right? Absolutely. And you see, I, I, I like what you said. You, you kept on going back to the PR team. And this, this PR team cuts across all government yep. agencies. Absolutely. It's not even just every to... Public not, yes, every public office. Because, again... There has to be proper strategies, you mm. know, for information dissemination. You can't just have anybody because the person is your person. Yeah. Get professionals on board mm -hmm. so that we can actually look at these things. Where we are wrong, we admit it there and there. So that shows that you are being honest yep. Yep. and you're transparent with your yep. people, yep. right? As opposed to just trying to whitewash it mm -hmm. and make it look good. I mean, I remember one of the topics that we talked about, sacrificing, right? Yeah. When people were sh saying that, Imagine in the heat of all of these things that happened, you bought SUVs Aye. for your for your lawmakers, Aye. right? At, at ridiculous amounts. Even if you had bought SUVs, Uti, right? And you even said, you know what? Let us patronize the local uh, manufacturers of SUVs in Nigeria. No, you are all the way. You to don't the, even need to end. because if you even take the people who were existing office holders, maybe you bought them card. Did you amortize it? I mean, these are the things that you need to show us that you are also tightening your belt. The sacrifice cannot always come from the populace. You are, I mean, we've talked on this show several times with several of our, of our, um, of our guests about the bloat and the just massive oversize of the public sector. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody wants to bail that cat. So there's so many ways in which you can be more prudent. You know, somebody was saying the other day about their salaries. I said, how many are they? They are less than 1,000. How many are in the Senate? How many are in the lower chamber? Like, literally, that money is a drop in the ocean. But if we're serious, we start to make some symbolic gestures for starters. Then we start to have real plans about, you know what, how are we going to cut these recurring expenses? Because you are borrowing to fund to pay, the government. To, to, you are borrowing to pay salaries. You are you borrowing know? to pay... I, I mean, and most of this borrowing do not even go into capital expenditure. Exactly. Say. It's recurring I mean, um, um, expenses. expenses, which is a big problem for us. So again, so I mean, we to we've touched a lot on a, a, a lot of things, right? Mm. So how do we move away from this? Like, I, I hear you, mm -hmm. because again, some in, in the midst of the conversation, you're already preferring solutions as mm. to what our expectations would be like, you know, for 2024. Mm. Mm. I want transparency. I want yeah. a government that feels my pain. I want a government that understands that we are all in this together mm. and we'll tighten our belts together. Absolutely. As opposed to us, in, I mean, this is where the drama that happened with COP28, right? Where mm -hmm. somebody was called uh, I mean, item would, you number seven. You are talking about COP28. <laughs> Even just in the size of the president's entourage when he's that, that came around. That came in to Lagos. Lagos, yes. I mean, look, just when, when you look at all of these things, right, it's like you are talking from two sides of your mouth. On one hand, you're saying you know what you understand, but your actions tells the complete Completely opposite, right? Story. So, I mean, and again, with communication, I mean, you are the expert in communication. Mm. You know that everything matters. Yep. If I say that I'm not feeling fine, or if I say that, oh, I, I really feel your pain, and I come to your, your morning, I come to your house heavily made up, what does that tell you? That this person is, I mean, you're doing just fine. Like, you're doing just fine. <laughs> so, I mean, so, it, and this is the conversation that I want some level of humanity mm. when it comes to governance in Nigeria because the truth is we are humans, right? And Nigerians, in, in fairness, Nigerians don't need too much. No, we're we not. are not we asking are for too much. We are a very easygoing people. people. We are the most we're easiest people to govern. We're by the little that we get. Um, and that's what even makes it painful, right? Because it doesn't actually take much to wow us as Nigerians. We take the little and we're just like, whoa, 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 we're so excited. I mean, it really doesn't. And I mean, there's so many places where quick changes, low-hanging fruit, quick wins can be made. But like I say, it's all about the narrative. What stories are you telling? Right now, the renewed hope cannot be renewed because nobody can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Everybody on touch. You know, Everybody, so they look for You don't say when they say renewed hope. It means there was hope in the first place. Before you know, you can, it can they, be renewed. That's why I'm There saying. was never hope anywhere. Mm. So. <laughs> and they've not done anything renewing. in the last seven months. To bring hope in. Absolutely. You, as a leader, you know, you're a visionary. If I can't see where you're going, I expect that you know where you're going. And then I place my own faith in you. And that you communicate I believe to that me. you are leading, mm -hmm. and then you are communicating to me so that I continue 
to have that faith in you that we're going somewhere and then I see the results. But right now, all we keep seeing is more and more promises, more and more promises. And the promises are light on information, right? So this 500,000 hectares, where? Hmm. Right? Is it cut across states? How are we addressing security to make sure that the issues that we're dealing with now Because don't not... forget why we're having food crisis in the first place was because of the insecurity. A Absolutely. lot of farmers had to abandon their farms. Absolutely. A lot of farmers were killed. A lot of farmers were kidnapped. A lot of farmers, you know, had to pay ransom to go and get their harvest from the farmlands, yeah. right? So these were the issues that even brought about the food insecurity uh, in the first place. So you can't just wake up and say, like you rightly said, where is the 500,000 hectares? Yeah. Where are the lands located? Yeah. Where would it be? Would it be, will it be okay, um, in partnership with... I think I've said this thing several times before. I will repeat it again. We were called to come and bid for a, a land, a, a farmland that was owned by Lagos State Government. Mm. Just before Sanwulu came into power, in the previous administration, we came, we bidded and everything. The next year, they now said, okay, we're waiting for the results. Next thing, they say, oh, that it had been um, allocated to someone, right? Mm. This land was in Oshun State. It was owned by the government. It was a palm plantation. Mm. So because we are palm, uh, palm uh, um, um, planters, right? Mm. So it was like a square peg in a square hole. So they said, oh, come and bid and all of that. But we never got any information. Mm. Only for us to just wake up one day, the next day in the, in the papers. I woke up one morning and I saw... Uh, Lagos State Government acquires new farmland. They didn't even mistake to even say maybe they should increase the hectares. It was the exact hectares, mm. exact location, exact this. And I said, why, how are you acquiring something you already owned? Mm. So it didn't make sense to me. So I, ever since that time, anytime I see things like this, and that's why I love what you're asking for, because it is vague. Mm -hmm. If you give me Very details, you cannot details. come back because there is a lot of repetitive yep. projects in Nigeria. Yep. What you did 10 years ago, you come back and say you're yes, just about now. to do this layout. And it's a repetitive project. You've done it before, yep. right? But you see, they never executed it, so they'll put it back into the project. Um, budget. And, and if we had real forensics on our yeah. budget, Uti, we will not be where we are today. Uh, we will not be where we are today if we had real you know, forensics. The budget is part of, I guess... The key things that we talk about in 2023, of course, I think there was, um, oh, I forget his name now, the man who's challenging the way the budget was passed, the um, 2024 yeah. uh, appropriation and that. So, I mean, the truth of it is there's enough issues there also. Um, and when we talk about going into 2024, I mean, when we even talk about results and measurement of metrics, I think inflation is at about 28%. So food Absolutely. inflation is over 32%. It's 32.84%. It's, it's crazy, Uti. All these things you want to plant, please, that is helping this food inflation. Mm. How is it going to bring it down? And those are the things people want to hear. Not mm. just, I will do, I will do. We will do, we will do. Where, what have you done and what are the results? But like I said when we started the show, I am positive. I am hopeful. Um, call it wishful. Call it whatever you want to call it. Um, but I am. I, I believe that the motivational speakers that we were, that we kept saying it is well and we'll be fine, persevere, be strong, we made it, we did it, we're here. I think we should carry that into Absolutely. 2024. Um, we have seen, um, or at least I would say I have seen, that there is an understanding of the areas that we need to fix. So those key things like the subsidy, even though whether you argue it's here, it's still not here there is at least some awareness of some of the big things we need to fix. I mean, I remember he also talked about the refineries coming online, Potakot, Dangote. I mean, the Dangote, the, the number, just, the days keep just rolling, right? Um, did, he have to, so, did he have to commission that refinery? But you see, this is what we're saying, because you wanted to put it under somebody, well, somebody's... Um, you know. But hey. So, so let's hope that mm. we will see... Uh, I think, you know, we didn't, our GDP didn't grow as much in 2023 compared to 2022. So let's hope that if we see <coughs> a dedication mm. to the things that he mentioned, because that's the final bit I will speak about in the speech. He mentioned the things he was supposed to mention. Yes, security, food. Now, if they actually, <laughs> actually do it and get through it, mm. right? and deliver on it, then things will, will be, be better. better. Absolutely. But as it is Nigeria, <laughs> and it is our current leaders, 
everybody pray. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> I was just going to say that, in, in fairness, look within. Mm. Find, I mean, people are actually getting remote jobs. Just find ways to just... Don't jack power, please. Please, you should not leave us. <laughs> like jack power. All right, so good evening, my wonderful sisters. Welcome back to the new dispensation. It shall be well with us. Amen. Amen. It shall be well without all by God's grace. We will be amongst those that God will pave ways for. Amen. Amen. Now and other years to come. Compliments of the season. Thank you so much from Mrs. Adeniji from Aja. Oh, wow. Mm. Thank you so much. We are happy to be back. Yes. We missed you guys. Yeah. You, know, but you know we have to take a break every December. When I know this. But we missed you guys. We're happy to be back. And we're hoping that this year truly we will make a, a meaningful impact. So mm. our conversations will truly bring, you know, we, we, we want to be able to bring real-time solutions mm. to people. Absolutely. So whatever the issues are, we're able to tackle it, you know, with the information, and you run with those kinds of principles mm. and all of that, implement them in your lives, and we actually see results. Mm. So I'm looking forward to testimonies in 2024. Absolutely. We would find as much as possible, we'll look for opportunities. When we find those opportunities, we would share as well. Because again, I believe that the difference between a rich man and a poor man is the amount of information that is in somebody's head and mm. is not in the other person's head. Mm. It's as simple as that. So if we get ourselves informed and we continue to pump those information within ourselves and implement those information, I think things will change. But Uti, mm -hmm. it was really lovely doing this with you. Absolutely. Yay. Welcome to 2024 again. So what are we doing again tonight? We're hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. We have to go and do... January 1st, hunger. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching, guys. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can drop your comments, interact with us further, and share. Remember to share or engage on social media. Mm -hmm. Share with families and friends. This year, we have been begging people to Don't share. Don't watch alone. Don't watch alone. Kill all day. Now, remember, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Whatever happened or whatever has happened in the past year, the new year brings fresh beginnings. Let's be hopeful for 2024 and believe that fresh things will happen this year for us all. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.